Okay, this is the second section on electricity, section B. Uh, the first part is looking at mains electricity. So, in mains electricity, we'll be looking at um, plugs, fuses, circuit breakers, earth wires, alternating current, and then we'll look at power being voltage times current. We won't go into any detail on this yet. When we look at um, circuits, coulombs, charge, moving around a, a, a circuit, we'll look in more detail at what electricity actually is. Um, but for this part, it's just a simple overview of mains electricity. So we'll start by just talking about uh, how it works then. So, electricity. Um, electricity comes to the home uh, as an alternating current. That means it flows in one direction and the other direction. And it does this at 50 hertz. It does it, it goes in one direction, back to the other way, and back, backwards and forwards, 50 times per second. Now, when you plug your plug into the main supply, the electricity comes in through the live pin, which is here. So the electricity comes in here, and it passes through the fuse. It goes along the brown wire, which is the live wire, and it goes to the appliance. So it goes to the light, or to the lamp, or whatever it is. Then it returns from whatever it's plugged into, and it comes down the neutral wire, and out the neutral pin. So the electricity, comes in through the live, through the fuse, down the brown wire, to the appliance, back again, and down, back through the neutral, okay? So a plug is just like pins around a battery, only it's alternating current, brown and blue. Now the cable grip is there to protect in case people trip over the wires, so therefore it doesn't pull on them and it doesn't drag on them where they are connected electrically there. The whole thing is surrounded by a big plastic case because plastic is, a, is an insulator and therefore it protects these wires and prevents electric shock. You also have white, normally white, protective insulation around these coloured wires um, in order to prevent electrocution. The coloured wires themselves obviously are covered in plastic again uh, for insulation and they are given these colours so you can identify them. Now the fuse is there, the fuse is there because if the current exceeds a given value then the wire, a very thin wire inside the fuse, will melt. So if there's an electrical fault and the current goes higher than that which is uh, deemed safe for that appliance then the fuse wire will melt which means the electricity can no longer flow and then the device is rendered safe because the electricity can't flow anymore. So fuses are there, very thin wire the, a particular, they allow a particular current, and if the current goes too high, they melt and stop the current from flowing. The earth wire, or the safety wire, is there as a safety precaution. So, in cases of appliances where you have, say, a metal body, a metal case, they're there to protect you, should you get an electric shock from that. So, for example, if you had an iron, So if you have an iron, now you plug your iron in and there's a wire which goes to your plug. Now inside your iron there is um, there's a, heat, a heated filament, so there's this, this large filament inside the iron and this gets really hot. Now inside here, inside your wire you have three parts. So you have, when your electricity comes in, you have your brown wire, and your brown your brown is the live. So the brown live wire is connected to this filament. And the blue wire is connected to the filament. So the electricity comes in and it goes down the live wire through the filament. As it does so, it creates lots and lots and lots of heat. And it goes back down the neutral wire back to the plug. Now where this could be potentially very dangerous is if the iron was made of metal, which the bottom plate is, if the iron is made of metal, and if this live wire came loose, now let's imagine it came loose 
if this wire, this live wire, came loose and came away from there and was touching the metal case of the iron. Now if, so now, the iron itself, the body of the iron, which we're assuming is metal, is now live. It's connected to the live pin. So if you came along and you touched this, so if you came along and you were to touch that, the electricity would go through your body to the earth. Okay? Now then, this would result in an electric shock which could kill you or seriously hurt you. So instead of that, there's a safety precaution on all items, electrical items, which have a metal case. If they're double plastic insulated, they don't need this, but if they're metal, they do. So instead of becoming live and potentially electrocuting you, the green and yellow wire, the earth wire, is connected, oops, it's connected To the case itself. So the green wire, the, the earth wire, the safety wire, the green and yellow wire, is connected to the case itself. Now, if the live wire came loose and touched the case, now rather than it becoming live and electrocuting you when you uh, touch it, what happens is this. The electricity goes along the conducting metal case and it goes down along the earth wire to the earth pin. Now that's connected to the earth. So this means that when the case becomes live, the safety wire, the earth wire, which has hardly any resistance at all, will conduct the electricity away to earth. When this happens, because you've bypassed this element here, or this filament which has got relatively high resistance. Now you've got no electrical resistance and therefore the current will spike, it will surge, it will go really really high. And when this happens, the fuse inside the plug will melt. So, as soon as the live wire touches the metal case, the electricity will conduct along the safety wire, the earth wire, to the air because there's no resistance, there'll be a surging current that will blow the fuse inside the plug, rendering the whole thing safe. And that's why, on all appliances which have got a metal case, you must have an earth wire connected to the case, in case the live touches it and prevents a shock. Okay? Now, we also need to know about circuit breakers, okay? Circuit breakers, all they do is, they uh, automatically turn off the electricity if, um, if, for example, more current goes to an appliance than returns from an appliance. So if you've got 10 amps going to a lawnmower and only 8 amps comes back, a circuit breaker identifies that some current has been lost and that might have been lost by electrocuting someone and therefore it will automatically turn off the circuit straight away. Um, they are easily reset, they're very, 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 very fast. Um, so they're a really good way to protect people from hurting themselves. Now, it's also important to realise, like I mentioned earlier, that electricity, when it comes to your home, comes as an alternating current, which alternates backwards and forwards at around 50 hertz. And we'll go into that later in more detail when we look at um, the time periods and the frequency of these things, okay? Um, but what is important for now is this. Um, power is voltage times current, and energy is power times time. So if we just look, there are two equations, P equals VI, and our other equation, energy is power times time. Now then, the first one, P is VI, all this means is power is voltage times current. So for example, if you have a hair dryer and you plug it in and the mains is 250 volts. That means that if the current in this hairdryer is say 8 amps, we can say the power of the hairdryer would be 8 times 250, which is 2000. Now power is measured in watts. Volts 
is vo uh, voltage measured in volts, current is measured in amps. But the power of this hairdryer would be 2000 um, watts. Now where this equation often comes in is to calculate a specific value for a fuse. So for example, if you were told um, that the electricity supply is 250 volts, and if you were told the power of an appliance, so they could say the power of a particular appliance is one kilowatt. They could say to you, what will be the current? So they could say, what will be the current passing through that appliance? And you would say, P equals VI. And now there are two options. You can substitute your numbers now or you can rearrange now uh, and vice versa. So power is one kilowatt. Remember, kilo is thousand. So 1000 is 250I. So I is a thousand divided by 250, which is four amps. Now, so we've just worked out that the current flowing through this device is four amps. The next question would likely be, which fuse would you therefore put into it? And they might say one amp, three amp, five amp, or 13 amp. So they would say, pick which fuse you'd put in and say why. Now, hopefully you realize the correct fuse in this instance is a five amp fuse because when it's running safely, this appliance uses four amps and therefore a three amp fuse would melt straight away whilst it was being safely used. So that's too small, it would just melt straight away. You wouldn't pick a 13 amp fuse though because if there was a problem with the device, then it would require a very large surge in current, more than three times what is normal for that appliance before the fuse would melt and render it safe. So a 5 amp fuse is the next high value after 4. So the 5 amp fuse would break as soon as the current went up. However, it would not break under normal circumstances. But it would break as soon as it went up by just 25% then this thing would break. Okay? Um, so that's, that's important. Now, that's typically how they ask questions on fuses. Uh, and the other equation, energy is power times time. Um, so if we looked at, for example, our two kilowatt hairdryer. Sorry, let's put this in another colour. We've got a two kilowatt hairdryer. And that means it uses 2,000 joules every single second. So every second, power is just energy per second. So if it uses 2,000 joules every second, the equation says that energy is power times time. Well, obviously, if it uses 2,000 joules every second, in two seconds it would use 4,000 joules, in three seconds it would use 6,000 joules. So it's obvious that energy is power, joules every second, times the number of seconds. So for example, if you use a 2000 watt hairdryer, and say it takes you, say, five minutes to dry your hair. I'm sure it probably takes you a lot longer, but just say it takes five minutes to dry your hair. How much energy have you actually used? So you could say, energy is power times time. However, time is always in seconds. This is in minutes, so it's five, get it into seconds, five times 60, which equals 2,000 times 300, which equals six with one, two, three, four, five. 600,000 joules of energy to dry your hair with a two kilowatt hairdryer for five minutes.